yesterday we were talking about current sources right and um, we came up with uh, this kind of a topology can this be with pmos devices yeah yeah no difference right this kind of topology is called the cascode uh, topology this transistor above another transistor it's not really cas Gate called cascode. All right. Now, what's the problem? Uh, headroom. Yes, yes, yes. Any other problem? With my entire my topic so far, my topic so far has been current sources. What's the problem with this kind of a topic? No. Think about what we talked about in the introduction of the course. Ratios, yes, yes. Absolute values. So if I'm trying to make a current source. It has an absolute value of you know, amperes, some amperes, some milliamperes. It's just not worth my time and effort to work on current sources. Okay, I would rather have something that compares or creates a current equal to another current, or double of another current, or ten times some other current. Okay. So ratios are well defined on an IC, not absolute values. As a result, if I make a current source which has units of amperes, okay, that's the dimension. It's not worth my time and effort. So what we really do is instead of making current sources, we make current mirrors. Now, what a current mirror does is it sees the value of a current and creates another current, which is some multiple or fraction or uh, equal to the original current. Okay. So, how do we make a current mirror? We know how to make a current source kind of a topology. A basic current mirror can be made in this fashion. So this is the why am I calling it the basic current mirror? Because the current source here has only one transistor. So this is the rudimentary current mirror. So what it does, suppose both of these transistors are identical, both of these MOSFETs are identical in terms of geometry, width and length. Both of these have a width of W, length of L. And suppose I'm pushing I through one of the one of the MOSFETs. Then what is going to happen? If I push I through MOSFET number one, then it will develop a certain amount of VGS, which in this case, because of the way I have arranged it, the VGS is equal to the VDS. Brain and gate are connected together. So gate to source voltage is the same as brain to source voltage. Now, if you remember, your curve over here, What's the condition for the flat region of the curve? Vd 
ds is greater than okay now if vds is equal to vgs hopefully let's say vt is greater than 0 right so as long as vt is greater than 0 which is usually the case okay this relationship is automatically uh, uh, satisfied because of the way i have arranged my circuit okay so this relationship is automatically satisfied because vds is equal to vt vt greater than 0 right so what does that mean that means that i am in the saturation region in this flat area at least mosfet number 1 is in the flat area and when i am in the flat area my current is a strong function of vgs so the current id is a strong function of vgs i didn't write it that way right and a weak function of vds it's a strong function of vds all right so what does that mean i am now pushing i through this mosfet so given the i that means that vgs for mosfet number 1 is fixed okay because i is a strong function of vgs so vgs is the most important thing here so vgs is fixed given the i so for mosfet number 2 also the same vgs mosfet number 2 and mosfet mosfet number 1 they both have the same vgs okay the sources are connected together to ground gates are connected together right So the VGS is same for both. So MOSFET number two is going to conduct more or less the same current. It's still a weak function of VGS, but only a weak function. So the I coming through MOSFET number two, let's call this I zero. I zero is basically a strong function of VGS, a weak function of VGS. Okay. Yes. So as long as I ensure that MOSFET two is in saturation, thank you. If MOSFET two is in saturation, then only it's a strong function of VGS, weak function of VGS, not otherwise. Okay. So as long as that happens, whatever I MOSFET number one was conducting, MOSFET number two will conduct more or less the same amount of I. It's still a weak function of VGS. okay it still has not enough output resistance the output resistance so what what kind of thing is this now it's a current controlled current source right this is the control controlling current and that's the output current so it's a some sort of a current controlled current source some sort of a current controlled current source <coughs> and um, the output resistance is still you know pretty bad not very good so far so good will this work in general in general it will work okay this is the most commonly used current mirror if i put a signal card on top of in shunt with i so if i make if i apply a signal current over it okay so capital i is the bias current i apply a signal current on top of it 
what's going to happen in the small signal picture i will get small i at the output almost equal to small i at the output because of vds changes in vds small i will change in the vds okay is this understood so obviously we are not satisfied with uh, a current source which has poor output resistance so we would like to build a better current source so what would you do for that you use the caspot naturally that's the natural next step right so there are many ways of using the caspot and uh, i'll start with the one that is probably easiest to understand and then we'll uh, work our way through This is probably the easiest to understand. So let's try to look at this. A quick question before we proceed: Capital I is a bias current. Okay. What is the small signal output impedance of this? Looking in from this terminal. suppose this is m1 and this is m2 so before we proceed with anything else what was i calling it ro or ri r in r in want the accurate answer this is um, right why is this the correct answer i know it's from your formula but uh, any other reason i mean what about uh, these two transistors why don't they play any role gate current is zero gate voltage is fixed why is the gate voltage fixed fantastic so i is coming from the top which means that the same i is flowing out of the source of device 1 the same i is device 3 and the same i is flowing out of the device number 4 okay so ids 3 and ids 4 are very well defined they are equal to i absolutely equal to i because there is no current through the gate the gate is an insulator right now given these circumstances given the fact that ids 
4 is fixed. VGS4 and VBS4 are also absolutely fixed. You know, IBS is a function of VGS and VBS. Strong function of VGS, weak function of VBS. Fine. It's so a function of VGS and VBS. Okay? So given that IBS is IB is fixed, VGS and VBS have got to be fixed. And in fact, VGS is equal to VBS given the constraint here. For device 4, VGS is equal to VBS. The way I put it. Right? So the gate voltage of device number 4 is absolutely fixed. <coughs> Hence, the drain voltage is also absolutely fixed. Okay, for device number three, once again, VGS is fixed. The source voltage is fixed. That was the gate voltage of device four, right? So, as a result, the gate voltage of device number three is also absolutely fixed. So, under small signal conditions. The fixed voltages don't move, right? They are fixed. They are not going to move if you apply a small signal at the output. Alright? They are still fixed. As a result, you can connect them to ground for your analysis because they are fixed. They are not going to change. So that's why this result is correct. Okay, so be very clear about why this is correct. Every time, just make sure that you completely understand why you are doing what you are doing. Okay, so let's try to understand this. This is the RN, fine. You understand the small signal, hopefully. Now, as I was saying, this current is equal to I, so is this current. Okay. For device number four, VGS four is equal to VDS four. Okay, and I is basically. of VGS4 and VDS4. It's a strong function of VGS4, weak function of VDS4. Doesn't matter. VGS4 and VDS4 are both the same. So effectively I is just a function of some voltage. So that particular voltage has got to be fixed. Okay? So given the I, <coughs> that voltage is fixed. It's the inverse of this function. Whatever function it is. So that means that the voltage at this particular point is very well defined. Given the current, that voltage is a certain value. This voltage also happens to be the source voltage. They are connected together. Okay. So the source of M3 is also at a fixed potential. And the same result, of the same uh, uh, thing applies once again. So VGS of M3 also is fixed. As a result, this particular voltage is also very well defined. Fixed. Fine. So far, so good. Now let's try to see what's going on, on the other side. If the dimensions of M4 and M2 are the same, suppose M4 and M2 have the same geometry, same width and length, then the current coming through M2 This particular current 
It's a strong function of VDS, a weak function of VDS. That's fine. Right? That's absolutely fine. And um, what about to M1? Now, what's the potential at the source of M1? Let's look at this particular potential. At the drain of M2, source of M1. Now notice, the gate of M M1 is a fixed voltage. Okay? The current through M1 is almost Okay, the current through M1 is equal to the current through M2. Agreed? Okay, this color is not coming out clean. Okay. conducting I ok so by the logic of uh, this earlier current mirror by the logic of this earlier current mirror it is somewhat equal to I with some tolerance that if the drain voltage of M2 changes then it is going to vary here and there right you agree but it is more or less equal to I Okay. So, to start with, this current which is going through, oh, what am I saying? M2, I am sorry. The current through M2 is approximately equal to I because it is the same as the current through M4. Okay, and the current through M4 was I to start. Okay, I'm sorry. Now the current through M1 happens to be equal to the current through M2. So the current through M1 is more or less fixed to a certain degree. Okay? Not absolutely fixed yet, but more or less fixed. Do you agree? The current through M1 is more or less fixed. Now, what can you say therefore about VGS of M1? No, no, no. One second. The current through M1 is more or less fixed. The current through M1 is a strong function of VGS, a weak function of VDS. Okay? So what can you say about VGS of M1? VGS of M1 is more or less fixed. Okay? VG is fixed. Absolutely fixed. So what about VS? more or less fixed. Now look at M2. You have got a device M2. The gate voltage is fixed source voltage is ground, so that is fixed. Drain voltage is more or less fixed. 
the current through M2 is a strong function of VDS or weak function of VDS. VDS is going to vary weakly. Okay? So the current through M2 is going to vary even more weakly. M2 is in saturation. I am implying. Why? Okay. Look, what's your name? Vivek. Okay. I'll just uh, answer your question, but a little later. Okay. So, as Vivek is pointing out, that all this is assuming that M2 and M1 are in saturation. Right? <coughs> Fine. Let's make that assumption. Does it work then? <coughs> Do you understand it then? I'll prove just now that they are in saturation. Don't worry. Uh, does it work when M1 and M2? Does M1 have to be in saturation? At all? Why? So whatever I pointed out to be more or less fixed is not going to be more or less fixed. It's going to be worse off. Okay? If, if M1 is not in saturation, then I pointed out that the source of M1 is more or less fixed. That won't be more or less fixed anymore. It will be worse off. Okay? But the current will still remain more or less equal to I. So the bottom one is still going to be in saturation. Okay, so it will still fall back to the earlier case. So if M1 is not in saturation, I am going to fall back to this situation. Alright? So I will get worse output resistance, but I will still be falling back to this situation if M1 is not in saturation. If M2 is not in saturation, it does not work. Okay? Now I am going to prove to you that M2 is in saturation. I am yet to prove that. Yes. Should be. That is what I am trying to show you. Show here. Okay? So what I first started off by saying is that the current through M2 is more or less equal to current through M4. Okay? Now because the current through M2 is more or less equal to current through M4, the source of M1 is more or less fixed. Now if the source of M1 is more or less fixed, gate of M2 is fixed, source of M2 is fixed, then the current through M2 is not going to change at all. Okay, so this is this has been my story. This has been my argument so far. Alright? By this logic. situation and it works when M2 is in saturation. So that condition I am still implying. Okay. Now I am yet to prove that M2 is in saturation. So as Vivek was pointing out, why should M2 be in saturation? Now, let us take a quick look. Suppose I am pushing I through M1 and L, M3 and M4, then all right. So I have to use the equations, right? Uh, because uh, the saturation requires the equation. So the equation, the relationship for saturation 
is VDS has to be greater than VGS minus VT. Now this quantity VGS minus VT is called the V overdrive of the device. Okay, and the current through the device is usually some sort of square function of the overdrive voltage. Some function of the overdrive voltage. Okay, a strong function of the overdrive voltage, weak function of VDS if the device is in saturation. Now, what can you say about M4 and M3? Are they in saturation? They have got to be in saturation because drain and source are connected for both. Alright, so to start with M4 and M3 are in saturation. Now what is this voltage at the gate of M4? It's basically the overdrive voltage that you need plus a threshold voltage. So I am going to call it Vt plus Vov. Now this voltage happens to be the same as the voltage at the source of F3. Vt of M4. All the Vt's are the same. Correct. Vg of M4. Right? Some overdrive I need. Vgs instead of Vgs minus uh, instead of calling it VGS, I am calling it VT plus the rest of the quantity. It's the same. What about the voltage at the gate of M3? Plus 
Now take a look at M2. Is this insaturated? Are we winning by a huge margin? My, uh, why are we winning by a huge margin? Right. So I have to have VDS to be more than VOV. Right. That was my objective for saturation. So M2 will be in saturation if VDS is more than VOV, anything more than VOV. Instead I've got VT plus VOV. Now VT is usually a large number. To give you an idea, VOV could be something like 0.1 volts, 0.2 volts. Okay, 0.2 volts is usually a good number, good design point. 0.2 volts will put the device in strong inversion. Okay, it's usually a very good design. VT could be something like 0.6 volts. Okay, 0.7 volts. So my margin is huge. Alright? Even if VOV is not what you wanted, it's not 0.2 volts, it's 0.15 volts, doesn't matter. You have one by a huge point. Alright? So that's the, these are the approximate, I mean, to give you an idea of the range of the numbers. So does that satisfy you, Vivek? Okay. So this basically proves, I made an assumption in this case. What assumption did I make? <laughs> so I made the assumption that M1 is in saturation to prove that M2 is in saturation. Okay? Is M1 really in saturation? Does it matter? What if M1 is not in saturation? No, no, no. What if M1 is not in that? What happens? The source voltage will be a little lesser. Okay. I still have margin. Look, think about the margin I won by. Okay, I have won by a huge margin in this case. So I still have a lot of room before M2 goes out of saturation. There's a lot of room over here. Okay? So typically what you'll find is that M2 is mostly going to be in saturation. If at all someone is not in saturation, it will be M1. The design will work flawlessly if both are in saturation. Okay? If both M1 and M2 are in saturation, then you really get your large output resistance that you are looking for. Okay? Both are in the flat regions. Even otherwise, you are basically falling back to the earlier case. If M1 goes out of saturation, you are going to fall back to the earlier case. Even then, you will have a not very bad current source, current mirror. Alright? And uh, you have quite a bit of room to play with. Okay. Is this okay? So, For flawless operation, M1 and M2 have to be saturated. What is the max, uh, what is the minimum value of the output voltage? No, I'm not assuming VDS or M2 VDS. VS is the, the drain voltage of M2 is fixed. To what voltage? No? VT plus VO. You can go up to VOV, but it's not at VOV, it's at VT plus VO. If M1 and M2 are both in saturation, then the voltage at the drain of M2 is at VT plus VO. You can have um, the VDS of M2 VO is the VDS of M1 is also VO. Then VDS of M1 plus VDS of M2 is 2 VO. And the VT of M2 is VT plus VO. And the VT of M1 is VT plus 2 VO. If you can 
make that happen, and that's fantastic. It won't be with this particular particle. So the way I've drawn it, it's not going to happen like that. You're right. You're absolutely right. That would be a better design, right? What's your name? Bharat. So Bharat has better ideas. We will eventually implement what he's talking about. But this particular design, the gate of M1 is at 2VT plus 2 gm. Okay, it's at a much higher potential. So as a result, the source of M1, which is the brain of M2, is more or less fixed at VT plus gm. Okay, that's the property we are exploiting. And it's more or less fixed. And that also gives us some headroom. So that even if M1 was out of saturation, this can still play in a not so bad way. But then M2 is going to stay inside. Agreed? So, what is the minimum voltage at the output that you can tolerate? VT plus 2 V ohms. That is for ensuring both M1 and M2 are in saturation. Okay? And um, it will work even below this for quite some time before it completely stops working. Alright. So this is the easiest biasing scheme. This is the biasing scheme. Why am I calling it the biasing scheme? No. See, this is um, uh, how it works. VO can be negative also. Yes. So um, we talked about the re the regions of inversion earlier on, right? So if you want to maintain the device in strong inversion, then VOV has to be more than 6 kV over J, which is about 150 millivolts. If you want to maintain the device in weak inversion, then VOV has to be less than minus 6 kV over J, which is minus 150 millivolts. Okay. If you want to maintain the device in moderate inversion, then VOV is anything between minus 150 millivolts and plus 150 millivolts. Okay, so these are the broad uh, definitions. Uh, so you see, as a result, VOV can be anything. It can go really, really small. Now, the definition for Saturation, the definition we are using, we are using a definition which is basically uh, VDS has to be more than VOV. This definition unfortunately applies only in case of strong inversion. So the fact that it has to be more than VOV applies only in case of strong inversion. What if VOV is negative? Does that mean that the device is always in saturation? No. Okay. What if VOV is zero? In moderate inversion, VOV is zero. Does that mean that the device is always in saturation? No. Okay. So that uh, inequality, this particular uh, expression that we have used, that's why I didn't want to write this expression to start with. I was hesitating. This particular expression applies only in strong inversion. It doesn't normally apply. I mean, it doesn't generally apply under all conditions. Okay? If you want to have weak inversion or moderate inversion or anything else, the minimum possible VDS that you have to apply <coughs> is 6 kV over 3. Which is something like 150 millivolts. 
you have to apply it anyway. Okay. So to keep the device in saturation, if you have B overdrive less than 150 millivolts, then you have to apply 150 millivolts. If B overdrive is more, then fine. So, in situations where the overdrive is less than 6 kV over Q, then you can take this number, this inequality as BDS greater than 6 kV over Q. In situations where the overdrive is more than 6 kV over Q, then this is correct. This inequality is correct. Okay? This is kind of a rough, uh, very, very crude uh, way of uh, defining saturation. But All right. So this V overdrive, this quantity is a very uh, 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 hand waving quantity. Okay. Don't rely it too much. Uh, don't rely on it too much. Uh, if you, at this point of time, I think in in this context, I should point out. Uh, what is really what what kind of uh, expression really works These are all uh, <coughs> normalized. This is a normalized curve. kind of defines the uh, point where the, we transition from strong to weak to moderate in water. I'll discuss this uh, in the next class. Okay. So it works for all technologies, all kinds of, all varieties of MOSFETs. So we'll discuss this uh, later on. Any questions so far? for this kind of this for material till here any questions <coughs> <coughs> 